Okay, so the basic idea of the Phillips curve is going to be a relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. So this comes from historically just an empirical observation that there was a trade-off between these two things. So just think in terms of if there's a booming economy and unemployment is falling, then you're moving in this direction and you're sort of overheating and you have this high and higher inflation. Um, and the opposite case of going into recession, for example, so unemployment is uh, increasing, but you're sort of taking pressure off the economy, and so you're seeing a fall in the inflation rate. So that's the basic idea of this trade-off that makes up the Phillips curve, and we're going to talk about short run versus long run. It helps to compare this to the aggregate demand graph, because we should hopefully be pretty familiar with how this works, and you're really just translating from this graph over to this graph. It's just a different way of looking at uh, more or less the same story. So in this case, let's, we're starting in long run equilibrium uh, at point A, and we're just going to translate it over here to the Phillips curve. So um, let's assume that, first of all, we have price level over here and inflation rate. And in this context, we can kind of treat this as if we're talking about inflation over here. So, um, so we can compare the two. And then we have real GDP and unemployment rate. So let's so long run equilibrium. Let's just say this long run equilibrium, instead of corresponding to a particular price level, corresponds to kind of chugging along here at two percent inflation. And we're assuming that five percent unemployment is consistent with long run equilibrium here. So that means this is our natural rate of unemployment. We're assuming that's the natural rate. So let's say we start at A here, and then we have a standard negative demand shock. Right, drop in aggregate demand. So we just want to see what does that look like over here on the Phillips curve. Well, we're, we know we're going into recession, so we know that unemployment is going to be rising, which means on the Phillips curve we're moving in this direction. So since this is unemployment, which moves unemployment rate, which moves inversely to real GDP, um, we're going to be moving in, in the opposite direction here. So we're moving along, so, so we're in the short run, that's why this is the short run Phillips curve. And so we have this trade-off between inflation and unemployment, which, which we already saw over here. That's why we're just translating it over to the Phillips curve, because we know that this means higher unemployment and lower inflation. So that's what our negative demand shock looks like on the Phillips curve so far. So in the short run, we do have this trade-off between inflation and unemployment. And then as we know, if we just uh, wait around for the adjustment, remember sticky wages, so that's what's giving us that, that trade-off in the short run, but we know that's not going to last in the long run, which is why this is not a long-run equilibrium. So wages adjust, increase short-run aggregate supply. Now I'm back in long-run equilibrium. Unemployment and, and real GDP goes back to our long-run values. And you can, you can see on this graph, I didn't um, get a label, but obviously the price level is lower. So what happens here is that we're no longer on the short-run curve. This particular trade-off that existed in the short run as we moved along our short run aggregate supply curve is not going to exist in the long run. So our short run Phillips curve is going to correspond to a particular short run aggregate supply curve. As soon as we're off that short run aggregate supply curve, we're going to be off this short run Phillips curve. This no longer describes the trade-off because this is what the trade-off looks like over here and now this, this is the trade-off. So we're on a new curve. As soon as we shift over here, we're going to shift over here. So we're back into long run equilibrium, um, natural rate of unemployment, and if we want to correspond it to the lower inflation over here, lower price level, we're just going to end up at a lower inflation rate. I just gave it a number, and so we're back in the long run. So that's why in the short run we have this trade-off, but in the long run, just like we got back to the long run over here, well here it's in terms of unemployment rate, long run Phillips curve, um, the unemployment rate does not vary with the inflation rate in the long run because it's just after all the adjustments have taken place, we are back on the long run Phillips curve, but now we're on this curve. So we're just like we're always on a short run curve, right? The next shock, we're now on this curve. Well, now we have this particular trade off between inflation and unemployment. If we just repeated things and we would just go here again, back to here, just like the same thing over here, we could go here and then back to here. So these curves over here represent the trade off that's being reflected in any particular short run aggregate supply curve. So that's a standard negative demand shock story. Um, now notice that we could also think of it as expected inflation corresponding to a particular short run Phillips curve. So this says pi sub e over here, pi just being an, an abbreviation for inflation, um, expected inflation. So since this is 2% and we're adjusted to it, we're in the long run equilibrium, 
while we're on this curve, everyone's expecting 2% inflation. So if everything's adjusted to that, then we're in long run. But as soon as we have delivered a shock here, and while people were expecting 2%, because remember, wages are stuck at some level, basically expecting 2% inflation, and now there's this inflation shock, this demand shock. And so while everyone's expecting 2, if the actual inflation is 1, then that's why we're not in long run equilibrium anymore. So that's, you can sort of t take advantage of this trade off between inflation and unemployment, but only as long as expectations are still 2%, right? As soon as things adjust, everyone's gonna renegotiate their wages. Um, we're gonna adjust our expected inflation to what's happening to actual inflation. So now when we make that adjustment, we're on a new short run Phillips curve. So here we have 0.75% because that's what's gonna um, get us to long run equilibrium. If everyone expects 0.75, which means you're on this curve somewhere, and the actual inflation is 0.75, then that's what makes it long run equilibrium. As soon as we deliver some other shock, if we do the same thing, well, everyone's expecting 0.75, and now it's even lower. So you sort of ca caught people off guard, and that's how you can um, exploit that trade off if, if that's what you wanted to do. Um, in this case, it's, it's negative, so you wouldn't want to send it into recession. But as we'll see, if we have a positive demand shock, we can exploit that trade-off um, this way. But um, so as soon as you, as soon as as actual inflation is different from expected inflation, then you're off that long run. Um, so in this case, it's happening to the downside.